hello students welcome to our new video and today we are learning about the application of simple harmonic motion so let's talk about the applications of simple harmonic motion the first one is simple pendulum and second one is helical spring and in simple pendulum the second part is also known as second pendulum which is easy after knowing uh, simple pendulum so let's talk about simple pendulum first so simple pendulum is uh, observed right by the people in daily basis so today we are topic talking about simple pendulum and let's start about simple pendulum in this video i am only giving the concept of derivations so i will not waste my time in def definitions and other things so let's go to the first thing that is needed is acceleration for simple pendulum for that we need one figure of simple pendulum so let's make it physics is all about figure right mainly in derivations so When you imagine pendulum, the normal figure that comes to your mind is this figure, right? So let make so let's make this figure. C A B. You can name any any letter. This is the object, right? Which is in simple pendulum. The position, different positions. C A B three other points or positions right for this pendulum so let's take this position b the mean position is a right from which the pendulum started so the mean position is a so now it goes to the position b in time t so let's make the b position sorry okay b position this is mg cos theta this is mg sin theta the two components this is normal vector method so the distance covered is y and the angle made is theta now let's say it in language if you are uh, if you have doubt in language so let's make it clear let l be the effective length of the pendulum so the pendulum bob of mass m mass m is slightly displaced to extreme position b from mean position a this is mean position is slightly displaced to extreme position a the weight of bob can be resolved into two components mg cos theta and mg sin theta right this you can write so i'm just telling by words the component of weight mg sin theta tries to bring the bob back to the initial position a look at this the mg sin theta this component always tries to bring the ball back to the initial position of a it is directed towards a look so you can tell it right clearly that it always tries to direct the bob towards mean position so this component is called restoring force so mg sin theta is known as 
restoring force which tries to restore the position right restoring force now we know restoring force restoring force yaf is equal to minus mg sin theta now there is a big question in my, in your mind that is why this negative sign i i have told you i have told you in this my previous video so this negative sign denotes the positions right it is it denotes that the bob is directed towards the mean position this force is applied towards the mean position this negative sign told that told tells that so or f we know the value of f so put it yum yum cut it minus g sin theta if theta is very small then what happens sin theta just tends to theta just equal therefore a is equal to minus g theta let's make his equation first equation first from figure from figure we get that theta is equal to ab arc length by radius we always know value of theta in this shape right this is normal mathematics right arc length arc length divided by radius right in circular form in circular motion or periodic motion let's say this is arc length ab ab arc length and this is radius oa so this is the formula to find the theta when arc length and radius are given so that means this is distance y right value of arc ab arc length ab is y oa we know the length right length of the pendulum so therefore we get a is equal to minus g times y by l from uh, uh let's say second and from first and second from first and second a is equal to minus g times y by l this implies a is equal to minus g by l times y or we can simply write this also i just arrange them since g and l are constant since g and l are constant constant so a is directly proportional to y this shows that the motion of simple pendulum is simple harmonic application so we have to prove that the simple pendulum is in is in simple harmonic motion so to be in simple harmonic motion i already said the expression should be direct proportional to the displacement covered so it is in simple harmonic motion now let's look for time period in simple harmonic motion now it is easy to find all things by using one simple harmonic motion and second simple pendulum how look here in simple harmonic motion we know time period for time period we already took uh, acceleration in the previous video so let's take acceleration again minus omega square y we know this formula right in simple pendulum we just we just found it right and look in simple pendulum 
a is equal to minus g by l times y. Now from first and second, first and second, we get that minus omega square y is equal to minus g by l times y, y, y cut. This implies omega square is equal to g by l. This implies omega is equal to 2 pi by t. We know that. So let's put it. This implies t is equal to 2 pi under root l by g. This is the time. This is the formula of time period for simple pendulum. If asked, then you can do it. Now, now there are different conditions for this time period like inside satellite what is the time period of simple pendulum inside satellite if asked then what to do right 2 pi under root l by in satellite we have not we don't have normal g we have g efficient now what is g efficient G efficient G efficient is equal to normal G total G gravity minus the acceleration. So inside satellite the acceleration is equal to G. So G minus G is equal to 0. So we get the value G efficient is equal to 0. That means T is equal to infinity something by 0. That means pendulum does not oscillate time period it does not the time period is infinity Matlab, means it just infinitely so the time so it does not have fixed time so that means it does not oscillate there should be fixed time period for the oscillation of simple pendulum if there is no fixed time period then we get that the pendulum does not oscillate now let's look another condition inside lift what happens when the leaf moves downwards with uniform velocity what when the lift moves downwards with uniform velocity what happens t we know 2 pi under root l by g efficient let's say that now here g efficient is equal to g minus a this is normal with uniform velocity if velocity is uniform then always if the body is moving with uniform velocity then that implies the body does not accelerate that means acceleration is equal to is equal to zero that is g so is equal to 2 pi under root l by g that means the pendulum shows correct time this is the time period for pendulum so it shows the correct time when the leaf moves downwards with uniform acceleration now with uniform acceleration what happens moves with uniform acceleration we know t is equal to 2 pi under root l by g efficient g efficient is equal to g minus a uniform acceleration means a cannot be zero so so just we can say that in this condition t is equal to 2 pi under root l by g minus a where a decreases due to which g efficient increases right a decreases due to which g efficient increases if uniform acceleration is there then a decreases 
if a if a decreases then g efficient increases right that is normal and if g efficient increases if g efficient increases then what happens to t t decreases there is that is a relationship given right so uh, if a decreases if a decreases then g efficient increases increases and t decreases so this is the relation between them so this is normal thing and now i said you about simple pendulum so let's just talk about simple pendulum sorry i think the video is already long so just take short time for give some time for simple pendulum then we will say bye for today simple pendulum the pendulum whose time period is 2 second is called sim simple pendulum time period is equal to 2 second normal thing so for second pendulum for second pendulum 2 is equal to 2 pi under root l by g therefore l is equal to now what happens to l 2 divided by that is 1 right so that gives 1 by pi mm, 1 by pi 1 by pi square 1 by pi square let's just solve it here 1 by pi square is equal to l by g right this implies this implies l is equal to g by pi square so this is the formula of length of simple of second pendulum so this much for today today we have learned about these things the application of simple harmonic motion the first application simple pendulum and inside it we learned about second pendulum so this much for today the next part we will read in next video so thanks for watching